story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror, comedy, and fantasy film called Detention. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Taylor Fisher is the most popular girl in Grizzly Lake, so it's not new to her to receive calls from boys early in the morning. At the same time, she likes the movie Cinderella 2, Beauty Scream, so she encourages everyone to watch it. Then, Taylor gives the audience a guide to not being a total reject before replying to an anonymous text. Unfortunately, as she gets ready for school, she gets brutally killed and thrown out the window by someone dressed as Cinderella, the main character in her favorite horror film. Meanwhile, Riley Jones wakes up and realizes she fell asleep while eating fries. Riley admits to being the second biggest loser in Grizzly Lake High, and the first place goes to the drunk girl who fooled around with a dead mascot in 1992. She then quickly gets dressed for school and tries to ignore the pain from her broken leg, but the school bus eventually leaves her. With no other choice, Riley walks to school and gets robbed by a hipster. Then, Riley slips on the floor when she gets to school, and nobody even bothers to help her. All the students are busy minding their own business, and a cheerleader named Ioni makes sure to show everyone that Clapton belongs to her. Sad to say, Ioni's ex-boyfriend, Billy, is still obsessed with her, and he'll stop at nothing to get back at Clapton. Billy breaks Clapton's skateboard and tells the smaller guy to meet him at the parking lot at 3 o'clock, saying the winner will get Ioni. Moments later, Clapton throws up in the men's room, feeling sick because Billy will just beat him up. During class, Sander tries to get close to Riley and asks her to be his prom date. However, Riley is not interested because she only has eyes for Clapton. Then, the teacher, Mr. Kendall, scolds them for being noisy, telling them to use what they've learned about quantum physics to build a time machine. So Sander returns to his seat and talks to his partner, Toshiba, while Clapton triggers the fire alarm system by lighting a Florence flask. A week ago, Clapton got called to Principal Verge's office for ruining their yearbook. Still, Principal Verge tried to understand Clapton, asking the boy for an excuse to let him graduate. Principal Verge wanted Clapton to impress him and get an A, or otherwise, he'd be expelled. Back in the present, Clapton is happy to receive an A from Mr. Kendall, but as it turns out, it's actually an F. Then, during cheerleading practice, Mr. Cooper tells Ioni she'll replace Taylor as the head cheerleader for the Grizzly Lake Bear playoff game. The man also informs Riley she'll be the mascot, and Riley can't even complain about it. In the gym, Sander talks to Clapton about Ioni, asking if he has a thing for her. So Clapton explains that Ioni is an old soul trapped in a hot cheerleader body, but Sander finds that hard to believe. At the same time, in the auditorium, Riley explains why they shouldn't consume meat during a debate. Unfortunately, she loses to an exchange student named Gord, who says they'll lose their place in the food chain if they don't eat meat. Moments later, Sandy urges Riley in the cafeteria to sleep with him. However, Riley makes it clear that it will never happen and gets up, asking Ioni and her friends if she can sit with them. Sadly, the cheerleaders leave, and Riley slips again when she steps on Jello. Upset, Riley tries to hang herself and the hallway in front of the school's stuffed grizzly bear, but the rope around her neck is not too tight, and the two girls who pass by completely ignore her. Riley then struggles to reach the chair she was standing on earlier, but the killer dressed as Cinderella attempts to kill her with an axe. Luckily, Riley manages to kick Cinderella and avoid the killer's attacks, and Cinderella accidentally cuts her rope. Refusing to give up, Cinderella strangles Riley in hopes to finally end her life, but the killer is forced to flee when the school bell rings. Shocked, Riley suddenly gets up and goes outside, where Clapton and Billy's fight is about to start. Riley tells everyone that someone's trying to kill her, but nobody pays attention to her. Then, two cops show up and inform the students that Taylor was killed in her bedroom that morning, but they don't believe Riley when she says she was just attacked. That night, Cinderella tries to kill Riley again in her bedroom. However, Riley kicks Cinderella and falls out the window, but the killer still chases her. Riley also struggles to run because of her broken leg, and she eventually eventually just gives up trying to escape. Riley quietly waits for Cinderella to come at her, but instead, a dog suddenly shows up and almost bites her, causing her to fall into the swimming pool. Upon seeing this, Cinderella finally leaves, and the cops arrive later to question Riley. Unfortunately, 
the cops find it hard to believe Riley, since her story is similar to the incidents in the movies Scream and Cinderella. Then, once they're gone, Clapton takes Riley around the neighborhood to show her nobody's there. They also talk about dancing and Ioni's love for 90s music, and Clapton mentions his plan to watch a movie with his girlfriend the next day. So Riley says she'll join them before walking home alone. While watching Cinderella 2 in the theaters, Ioni and Riley argue because Ioni won't stop making 90s pop references. They then go to a bowling alley with Sander, and Ioni tells Riley she's not pretty enough to be killed like Taylor. Also, Ioni says Cinderella wants to kill her more because she's more beautiful than Riley. Six months ago, Ioni urged Riley to ask Clapton out. However, Ioni started liking Clapton, much to her friend's disbelief. Unfortunately, that's the reason why their friendship ended, and their hate for each other just grows by the day. That evening, the students of Grizzly Lake High cheer for their football team. At the same time, a slimy white liquid oozes out of Billy's hand, so he fails to pass the ball and just runs away. He then collides with Riley and apologizes, and when he gets up, he throws up acid on his teammate. In the locker room, Billy reveals to Riley he has fly blood in his veins. As it turns out, Billy found a meteor in their backyard when he was young and touched it, causing his hand to be deformed. So his father covered his hand with their television, and Billy became a laughingstock because of that. Then, when his hand finally healed, he became strong, started growing wings, and throwing up acid. Sadly, Riley doesn't believe Billy's story and just tells him not to fight Clapton. Annoyed, Billy pushes Riley away and tells her to get lost, but his hand gets stuck on the girl's costume. Billy tries to remove it while Riley struggles, and when Clapton walks in on them, he thinks they're fooling around and leaves. Later that night, the students go to Sander's house for a party. There, Riley gets drunk after seeing Clapton and Ioni kissing, so she makes out with Sander to make her crush jealous. Sad to say, her plan doesn't work. But Sander still takes that opportunity to score with her. Toshiba and Toby T can't believe what they're seeing, and when Sander touches Riley, his finger gets stuck in her suspenders. Irritated, Riley slaps Sander just to get him off her, but the guy accidentally rips her top and exposes her chest. To make things worse, a student decides to take a video of them. Outside, Billy and Clapton finally fight. Billy ends up burning his hand on the grill when Clapton punches him, but he doesn't even feel the pain and only gets angrier. Then, Riley trips Billy before he can take another swing at Clapton, and Ioni insults him in front of everyone and reveals that his seed glows in the dark. Humiliated, Billy heads upstairs while throwing up acid and locks himself in a room Room, where his eyes glow red. Cinderella is there to kill him, but Billy defends himself and gets his hand stuck inside a television. Unfortunately, it isn't long before Cinderella severs Billy's arm and slashes his neck, and everyone downstairs gets shocked when the window breaks because of Billy's dismembered body parts. In the morning, Principal Verge questions Riley about the incident and her video, which also shows what happened to Billy. Then, Principal Verge decides to give everyone seen on the video detention the next day, the same day as prom. After talking to the principal, Riley tries to make a pass at Mr. Kendall, but as it turns out, he's into men. In a flashback, it is revealed how the school's stuffed grizzly bear was abducted from the planet Starclaw. Meanwhile, Principal Verge asks the students in detention who the killer is, but the teens refuse to talk. Then, once the principal is gone, the students discuss who the culprit is and agree it's Toby T, since they barely know him. But in the end, Ioni says the killer can't be one of them because their generation has had no major struggles. Struggles. Seconds later, Riley notices a guy in a hoodie sitting with them. The guy introduces himself as Elliot Fink, saying he's had detention every day for the last 19 years. Curious, Toshiba asks Elliot what he did to be in detention, but the strange fellow says he can't remember. In 1992, Elliot stayed in the library for detention after doing something indecent. He recognizes Ioni and asks if she went to that school in 1992, but it's Clapton who answers and sarcastically implies that's impossible. However, it's obvious obvious that Ioni is hiding something. In another flashback, it is revealed that Ioni's mother, Sloane, suggested switching minds so that her daughter would win the school dance-off. Sloane was a great dancer, so she said her mind would go into Ioni's body to win the dance-off for her, while Ioni's mind would go into her 18-year-old self in 1992. However, Ioni found that idea absurd and wished for her mother to go to another planet instead of always being drunk. Then, aliens switched their minds that night, and that's when Clapton started having a thing for Ioni. Ioni, unaware it was really Sloane. At the same time, Ioni decided to stay in 1992 since she easily got popular there. She also got the attention of the young Principal Verge, who thought she was Sloane. 
Unfortunately, Verge got rejected when he asked Ioni to prom. So Verge started making explosives during science class since he couldn't accept a future without Sloane. But he only ended up hurting himself and leaving a scar on his face. Back in the present, Riley gets scared when she finds Taylor's stuff on her desk. Finally, the students realize that the killer is one of them. So they watch Cinderella 3 on Toshiba's phone to see what the killer will do next. However, the movie only frightens them, and they tell Principal Verge that all of them are about to be killed. Of course, the principal doesn't believe them, and he scolds Mimi for interrupting him while he's talking. After that, Principal Verge notices Elliot but doesn't talk to him, and just reminds everyone not to do anything silly. Then, Principal Verge leaves and closes the door, where Gord is impaled with a ceiling fan. At the same time, the principal gets killed in the hallway by Cinderella. Concurrently, the students barricade themselves in the library as Elliot declares he's solve the equation. Elliot says if those numbers are correct, the world is ending in 10 minutes. He also adds that the destruction is man-made. And when Riley asks how they can stop it, Elliot reveals it'll happen in 9.4 minutes in 1992. Elliot thinks somebody went back to 1992 to change the history by blowing everything up, making Riley realize they're talking about time travel. Upon hearing that, Toshiba admits he's been building the school bear into a time machine for science class. Then, the girls notice that Sander and Clapton are missing so they all go out to find them and ignore the body of Principal Verge, which is cut in half. As they head to the bear, Riley points out that Clapton is terrified of the future and thinks he's responsible for the killings, since he hates the principal and Billy. Toshiba then sends Riley to 1992 using the bear time machine, and Riley confronts the younger version of her father as he drinks and tells him that's why her mother left him. Meanwhile, Clapton participates in class and finally receives an A, but Riley shows up and tells everyone he's a killer. So Clapton did denies knowing Riley, and the teacher says Clapton is her best student. In disbelief, Riley says Clapton never does his homework and tells the guy they've figured everything out. Exasperated, Clapton explains he chased Sander through the time machine after he got Gord, only to lose him in the end. Clapton also adds he's been stuck there for six weeks, but at least he's on the honor roll. Confused, Riley asks him why the world is ending in a few minutes, making Clapton wonder if that's why Verge is building a bomb. Clapton also says Sander is helping Verge, so they rush to the side classroom, where Sander reveals to the teen Verge he's from the future. Then, as he urges Verge to make the bomb go off, Riley and Clapton show up and take him away. But unfortunately, the bomb still explodes. Riley and Clapton try to take Sander back to the present, but the guy fights back and hits Riley. So Riley kicks him and loses her boot, and everything descends into chaos as they try to return to 2011. Luckily, they get sent back six minutes before Doomsday, and they think of a new strategy to stop Verge and Sander from killing everyone. In the science room, the real Ioni tries to get a signal on her phone. Then, Sander starts talking about Ioni, confusing Verge since he thinks the girl is Sloane. Meanwhile, Riley realizes that Verge is doing all that because Ioni broke his heart, suggesting they force Ioni to go with him. At the same time, Ioni quickly recognizes Riley when she calls her, and unlike her mother, she doesn't like Clapton. With no time to waste, Riley tells Ioni to ask Verge to prom and explains how the world is about to end in a few seconds because of him. Crying, Ioni asks Verge to prom, so the guy immediately stops making the bomb and hugs her. Then, Riley looks for the time machine switch in between the bear's legs when its door suddenly closes, and Elliot takes a picture of her. Sadly, Elliot gets detention because of that. Once the time machine opens, they immediately try going back to 2011. However, Sanders stops them and makes the bomb go off, but he only blows himself up. Then, Riley and Clapton finally return to 2011 and realize they've changed the future. Principal Verge is still alive and is now Sloane's husband, and Toby T and Gord are bandmates. Despite everything that happened, Clapton doesn't forget to show Principal Verge his high grade. At the same time, Sloane talks to Riley and thanks her for forcing her to ask Verge to prom, revealing that Ioni is still stuck in her body. Of course, that means Sloane is also stuck in her daughter's body, but there's nothing they can do about it anymore. Then, Riley and Clapton become the prom king and queen, so Clapton takes Riley's boot from the shelf and dances with her. Moments later, Clapton is about to kiss Riley when she sees the memorial for Taylor and Billy, realizing they didn't change anything. Cinderella then comes at them and breaks Riley's leg before removing his mask, revealing that Sander is the killer. Sander is mad at Riley for not sleeping with him, so he throws away his knife and gets an axe, which he uses to casually decapitate a girl. Enraged, Sander tries killing Riley and tells her she's pathetic like her friends, but Clapton stops him, and they get into a physical fight.
feet. Unfortunately, Sanders stabs Clapton, leaving Riley with no choice but to help her new boyfriend and bite Sander's hand. As they continue to fight, Sander takes the axe Riley just picked up and prepares to cut off her head. But the magnetic fields from the bear pull the axe and all the metal objects around, causing Riley and Sander to be pulled too. Exhausted and in pain, Riley steps forward to escape Sander, who gets impaled on the bear's fangs. Then, the other students realize what's happening in the hallway and see Sander's body, but they have no choice but to go on with their lives. Meanwhile, Elliot finally gets out of the tension. Later on, Riley talks about how Sander tried to end time because he saw no future for them. Then, she watches the news with Clapton and learns that Gord is an alien who is part of a vegetable species. Gord is mad at humans for eating his kind and plans to exact revenge, but Riley is confident that it's not yet the end of the world. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.